Welcome to the Biz Bash podcast, where we make biz strategy a piece of cake. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cammie, but you might know us better as Eliza and Calligraphy and Cammie Monet. We want to help you, our fellow stationers, artists, and calligraphers, confidently build a profitable and personality-driven creative biz. We're here to share our honest-to-goodness advice and actionable strategies for ambitious artists. So put on your party hat, quit being a procrastinator gator, and let's get this party started. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 20 of the Biz Bash podcast. Um, I'm just excited because it's another, you know, decade, double digit, I don't know. Anyway, um, everybody- <laughs> We finally reached age 20. Um, so today we're going to be talking about why the heck you guys need an email list and why it's not that scary to get started and um, just talking about like strategies to get you going and um, why they're so beneficial and kind of dispelling some of the myths about them because it feels like really weird to be like, we have to have everyone on our list immediately, but it totally doesn't have to be that way. So this actually came from a question from one of our listeners. So Elizabeth is going to read the question and then we're going to dive into all the content. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. (laughs) You're so welcome. Um, (laughs) This is uh, a question that we got via the Q and Cake page on our site from Letters with Jamie. And when we read it, we were like, this is kind of the perfect segue into this episode. So she asked us, hey, I signed up on Squarespace recently. I'm still working on setting up my website. You guys talk a lot about email lists How do you go about starting one with a brand new website? Would people even subscribe if I don't have a blog yet? I would love to hear more about this on the podcast. Elizabeth said she only had three tabs on her first website. Did she start her email list at the very beginning? And what do you do with the emails that you collect when you're just starting? So we're going to break this all down in this entire episode. All those questions you asked are all awesome questions. Um, Thank you for submitting that, Jamie. And if you're brand new to the business world in general, creative or not, you probably hear people talking a ton about building a mailing list, why you need a mailing list, how to build one. And we know there's a lot of resources out there for building mailing lists, but we're about to break down why you actually need one and how we use them in our businesses. Um, If you're an itty bitty business and you're just starting out with your side hustle, it never hurts to start collecting email addresses early for free on a platform like MailChimp. But don't get super overwhelmed if you're an itty bitty baby business, because if you get too sidetracked with growing your email list or get hung up on this, it can take away from other aspects of your biz. So that being said, that's our little disclaimer. And if you feel like this podcast episode is just going to overwhelm you, I mean, I know I got overwhelmed by podcasts about marketing lists. Or I'm, email I'm lists. still overwhelmed about yeah. email lists. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got super overwhelmed early on. So if you guys need to like skip this one or just like take it with a grain of salt and just like soak up some wisdom um, and then like move along, that's totally fine. Don't feel like you have to like implement every single thing um if that makes sense like we don't want you guys to feel pressure I know I felt pressure early on maybe that was just me yeah I was like I feel pressure and then I was like ah it's fine I'll deal with it later (laughs) 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 that's how we're different (laughs) it's fine (laughs) yeah and I but I really love like my systems and my mailing list that yes. I have set up now. This but is so your brain. Like you were just going to like go crazy on this episode because I know how much you love email marketing and email lists and segmenting <laughs> and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I was going to say too, like for anyone listening, um, if you are going to be starting an email list after you listen to this, just come up with one small goal for yourself. Maybe you start by sending one email a month to your list. And once you get comfortable with that, maybe you start sending two and you think about other things you can do. Um, But you can do a little brainstorming to like write down things you would want to talk about to your email list. But that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let Cammie like take over with this awesome list of email pros she has for why having a list is good. I feel like we already (laughs) kind of know these, but let's just go over them again. Okay. So we all know like the pros of having an email list. Um, Obviously you own your list. Like we don't own our Instagram followers, which is very sad. We don't own our Facebook pages. Like those are owned by Mark Zuckerberg and he can do whatever he wants with it. So (laughs) um, they can, you know, Facebook and Instagram get to totally dictate that audience experience. You don't really have a say over it. You don't get to make sure everyone sees it. Um, But email on the other hand, that is totally up to you. There's no like 
crazy algorithm happening. Um, and let's be real. We all check our email just as much as we do our social media. So like, why are we not doing that? Why am I not doing this? I don't know. Okay. So yeah, it's totally, more, <laughs> totally powerful because you own this list. And not to mention, you're speaking directly to your people. Like these are the people who have said, yes, I want to see Cami Monet in my inbox and have her come to my private personal space because I want to hear so much from her. So these are people who have already opted in. They're truly interested in what you have to say. They're not just following you for pretty pictures. Like they really care about um, the things you're offering and things you're selling, your services, all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, they're clearly interested in in what you're going to send them via email. And of course, no weird algorithm, which we all hate. It ruins our lives. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So plus you can have direct links and emails, which like on Instagram, you know, you can either do the swipe up thing or have it in your profile, but email, you can click right on a picture. It makes it so much easier. So the conversion rate is obviously much higher for email than social media because it's directly clickable. Um, and Facebook, I mean, obviously you can click links there too, but um, I think Facebook definitely hide your posts if you're posting links like they want you to pay to pay to play they want you to promote it so they totally do uh, and yeah. facebook and instagram will want to keep you on their platform they yes. don't want to send you elsewhere and so email gives you that power to first of all show up in chronological order like the moment you send the email is the moment it will pop up in their Ooh, email inbox. good one i didn't even think about that <laughs> yeah like are, there's no algorithm in email that would be so nonsensical <laughs> oh my gosh i know <laughs> um, and then like cammy said that ability to click through on the links that you're sending them because even like on instagram even with that swipe up even with the link in profile like the cookie tracking and all that stuff does not work through those browsers because they're not actual like internet browsers they're built into the app it's very interesting like the way that they W the way that they've done that because um, yeah. they don't want to direct you to Safari on your phone. They want you to be stuck in Instagram. So when you X out, yeah. <laughs> you're back in Instagram. Um, yeah. yeah. It's a direct personal touch with somebody, which is really powerful because then they have no other choice but to remember you exist when they see your name pop up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> So one thing to really be thinking about at the beginning is why. Why are you actually going to be collecting people's emails? Why do you actually want to build a list? Um, think about this before you spend a ton of time making free wallpaper for people to download every single month. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there's a lot of people doing it now, so it doesn't really set you apart. And if your whole goal is just to provide people with free wallpaper every month, then like, what benefit is that to your business, you need to have some sort of strategy in place. Are you talking about products that you're offering? Are you talking about something that you're going to be releasing? Are you just giving them a cute newsletter update with like your most recent blog posts? You want to take time to think about that before, um, mainly because you don't want to let them sit there too long without getting an email from you. Or as soon as you send a new one, you're going to get like a million unsubscribes, which has totally happened to Kami and I before. And it's like not a big deal when that happens because you don't want people on your list if they don't want to be there in the first place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's the more like consistent you're being with that content, um, the better traction you're going to get with your audience, the less unsubscribes you'll end up having. But when it comes down to it, you just have to have a plan. So um, the actionable step is like, where the heck do you actually start? growing your email list and cami has a couple platforms written down yeah um also so i know like i remember sending out free shipping emails and i would get like 50 unsubscribes i'm like why do you guys you don't want free shipping what is <laughs> but yeah <laughs> just, i mean people just unsubscribe and like there's also those things that like automatically unsubscribe people so don't take it personally i used to get emails every time someone unsubscribed and i would like look at their name and be like i see you i know you're my friend how could you do this <laughs> take it so personal but don't do that to yourself don't get those emails but anyway so um first things first when you get started like you always got to find an email service provider you're not going to be using gmail you guys um so i use mailchimp it starts off free i think um yeah it does start free mm -hmm. yeah so it starts free um so it's a great way to get started it's pretty user friendly i mean it's kind of clunky but i mean it's kind of like the basic one everyone knows mailchimp um elizabeth mm -hmm. uses convert kit and she's a convert kit maniac um, and we use convert yes. kit for biz birthday bash as well because of elizabeth so. i basically said to cammy i was like no way are we using mailchimp anymore Honestly, <laughs> it was a great decision there is so many more things you can do with convert kit that you can't do with mailchimp 
Um, but yeah, but it's also a big, it's a big price point difference, it is especially if you're starting difference. out. Cause I think we pay $50 a month for convert kit. Whereas like MailChimp, you can have for free up to 2000 subscribers or up to like 12,000 email sends, which, yeah. okay. So let me do a quick math for you. If you have that maximum amount of 2000 subscribers, you can only send six emails a month because that's 12,000 emails. So you have to keep that in mind. I don't see when you're starting out, I wouldn't see you sending more than six emails a month. I mean, I know I didn't personally, um, but when like you're trying to advertise during Black Friday or the holidays, like I would have to pay extra for MailChimp yeah. and that's when I would get really annoyed. I had I'd to be like, pay this extra. Is dumb. And then now they have it where like if you upgrade your plan, you can't like downgrade it again. You get yep. one downgrade or something. So now I'm stuck at the $30 a month thing and I don't even like send emails now, which we're going to talk about that. Oh my <laughs> gosh, you don't, Kim. I I'm sorry. I can only do so much. <laughs> no, I know. You can only do so much. This is why we're going to get someone to help you. Okay, um, yeah. Please help that's me. That's somebody. Um, okay. Yeah. And MailChimp, I would say, does work great for you, Cami, because you are so product-based. It allows you to drag in photos and to organize your templates very yeah. simply and easily. It's perfect if you're just starting out with emails Mm -hmm. um, because ConvertKit is HTML based. So you have to do a little bit of customization on the back end. And I took a, like a mini class um, from Spruce road. It's called like her convert kit mini class where she teaches people how to customize their convert kit email. Cause you have to know how to do that. So it's definitely more of that, like, intermediate to advanced interface which I mean I love I love 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 it but <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> um starting with MailChimp is perfect or I don't know if you've seen this Cami you're not on Squarespace anymore but Squarespace is offering email integration now like oh yeah I did think I, I saw an email about it but I didn't read it because mm-hmm. I don't care but um yeah and there's other <laughs> things too like constant contact is another one um, I can't think of any other ones. And uh, Infusionsoft, I think, is another oh, one. Oh, yeah. I think we did, like, a list of this on somewhere. Maybe it's not A to Z directory. Yeah. <laughs> probably it probably is. is. But it's – there are so many. There's so many different options for things you can use. But Infusionsoft and, like, some of those huge ones are what, like, online marketers like Pat Flynn and Amy Porterfield are using because they have lists of, like, 20,000, probably more than oh, that. Oh, probably, people. like, 20 million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They have so many people that they're like marketing to and segmenting to, but we'll we'll reel it back in. I would We're say talk like more about the basics. Start <laughs> off with Mailchimp, Mailchimp, and then graduate to ConvertKit. Like I kind of want to graduate to ConvertKit just because I want to be able to do the segmenting thing better. Like, and I mean, you're yeah. already paying thirty dollars a month, so, so you're only paying a little. Yeah, more. I don't care to pay a little bit more. That's totally fine. Then um, maybe like having something new would just like ignite my spark again. But, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and that'll come in. Cammy and I are going to do a little brainstorming later because I have some ideas for Cammy. I'm really so. excited. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's just talk about, too, like, how the heck do you get people on your list in the first place? Um, and this was kind of part of, like, Jamie's question of if she starts out an email list and she doesn't have a blog and doesn't really have anything else going on, how the heck do you get someone to sign up? Oh, you and you want to know how I got my first people on my email list? <laughs> Is wow. I did like local craft shows and I had a little piece of paper set up on front of my palette and it was like entered to win $20 shop credit and people wrote all their emails and then I would just go in and manually import them like that night and I probably got like 200 emails for just from that so it was people who were like stopping by the booth or whatever and that was like kind of how I built my first base of email list so that was kind of cool <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. I had no idea yeah that's really smart if you're doing stuff in person you should definitely be having a list out mm-hmm. Um, collecting those emails because if someone writes that down they're giving you permission and consent so you are allowed to email them yeah and then um uh, (laughs) okay I'll go I'm just gonna run over you um and then for getting people on my list anytime they purchase anything on my site they have the option to like opt in to email and pretty much everyone opts in so anytime I sell a product that person is added to my email list as well which is why I want those tags because then I can be like this person has bought something I think MailChimp does have like some form of this but I just have not dived into it enough like honestly 
Um, it's very – it's so hard to figure out. That's okay. the problem I have with it is that they do offer stuff like that, but it is not the same functionality as ConvertKit, not by like a million miles. And the moment I had to pay for MailChimp, I was like, I'm over this. You I'm not like going to pay for this platform with MailChimp. <laughs> Oh gosh, it was just like so frustrating to me for what I was trying to do and what I was visualizing for my email list. But I actually have a blog post too for why I switched from MailChimp to ConvertKit. So if you guys go to elizaandcalligraphy.com, I mean, that just lives on my blog. If you want to read more about why I made the switch, because I won't talk about that the entire time, like obviously you'll get some insight. Um, But yeah, let's talk about this like list of ideas we have for people you know, to get subscribers on their list because you wrote down a bunch of awesome things. Yes. Um, okay. Um, so you can offer a discount code incentive. I, I did this at one point and then when I switched to my new website, it went away because I just forgot to add it. But like if they signed up, they could get a, dim- a 10% discount code or 15% discount code sent directly to their email. This is really great for products, product-based businesses. I mean, discount codes. I've, so many businesses do this. Like think of like you go to a website and it pops up and it's like, get 10% off your first order, that kind of thing. Um, a freebie download. We do this with Biz Birthday Bash with our top 100 tips and tricks. That's kind of our opt-in for that. Cheat sheets, free templates, um, exclusive content. Like maybe your email list, you only have certain content. Like you're not doing the same thing as you are on your social media. Maybe it's exclusive stories or you know supply list, something like that. Like a worksheet, a video of you doing a watercolor, something like that. Private Q&A webinar a free challenge. We did a challenge. Um, we did two challenges, the ideal project challenge and new year, new biz. So that was really awesome to get people signed up on the email list because you had to be, um, getting the emails to know what the challenge was. Like we still did stuff online as well, but the bulk of it was through email and then, um, like a free trial. If you're offering some kind of like service based thing. Um, I don't know if that really works for our industry, but you get the gist. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many different ways to go about generating interest. And it doesn't have to be um, to loop back to Jamie's question. She was like, I don't have a blog. Are people going to want to hear from me? And you definitely don't have to have a blog to do these things. Um, I think when Cammie and I were brainstorming before the episode, I, I'm pretty sure that I got my first like 500 subscribers on my list because I created an Instagram guide that I let people download for free. Like I'm almost positive that's how I did it. So yeah. I got like a really good chunk of people. But the double edged sword with that was that that was like a chunk of people that were creatives. And so marketing to them is very, very different than marketing to a potential future client. So (laughs) that's, I think, but that's when I started realizing that I did have so much interest with other creatives, which is why I think I'm even doing Biz Birthday Bash today. Um, But yeah, that's something to like keep in mind. Is your incentive going to be geared towards other creatives or is it going to be geared towards your audience? And so like Cami offering that discount code will appeal to people who want her products, which is the smart way to go if you're selling a lot of products. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah. My business, my business list, my email list is definitely more people who want to buy things from me. It's not any creatives. Like when we do, we were just talking about how, you know, we'll send the same stuff out for about biz birthday bash. Like, Hey, we're offering a new contract and we'll send it to our personal list too. Just like keep up keep them updated i get crickets because no one in my on my email list is an actual creative um and elizabeth all of hers are creative so it like (laughs) she gets so much more traction than i do um but my my biggest like email campaign happens around the holidays like black friday all that like it goes bananas and that's awesome and that's like the only time i do emails (laughs) and when i do a workshop and that goes great but like i'm definitely yeah i think i've been thinking of it as like creative stuff and i need to think of it as like more client kind of thing so yeah yeah. right I mean it's it's hard to like differentiate that and I mean even for me I have segments now that if somebody goes and downloads my pricing guide online which I've talked about this before they have to select whether or not they're going to be inquiring with me or whether or not they're a fellow creative. So that way I can advertise to them and push email content to them that they're interested in and that my potential brides and grooms aren't getting stuff about the custom stationary contract that they clearly won't care about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, that's why I'm kind of like, oh, if I had ConvertKit, then I can actually see who is who and not and like tailor my content to them, you know, my non-existent content right at this point. But uh, yeah. yeah, it would make way more sense. But mm-hmm. okay, so on 
on your for when you first started out on your website, did you have a way for them to subscribe immediate like starting out? Um s- immediately like starting out, no, I didn't. Um but once I did add my blog, I think that's when I had a family friend who was like, where do I subscribe to get updates? <laughs> like that was the, she was like the first person who asked me, like, I'd like to get notified when you have something new go live. Um, and so that's when I really started looking into getting that set up. Um, I'd have to go back in the like the time machine that we've talked oh, about yeah. before online <laughs> to even see if I had any sort of sign up incentive on my website. Um, I could go back and look right now. I am but. <laughs> 99% sure that I did have it on there. And I was like, sign up for Monet Mail to get exclusive discounts. And it's like exactly what it says now, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so, I think that's, yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest draw for like my email list at first was having the exclusive um, access to getting workshop seats first, like you can, like because there's a limited amount. So people on my email list, I would email that list before I would like announce it on social media. So they got first dibs, and that was kind of a big um, like way of getting people on the list. And then mm-hmm. I also do like exclusive, like oh shoot, shop before everyone else. Even though I mean, there's like unlimited products, like they can buy whatever they want. But you yeah. know, they get like that insider access kind of thing. I like to do that, but. That's only when I release new collections, and it's it's been a while. It's been a while, guys. It's been a while. <laughs> been a second. Um, so I did find a screenshot from October seventeenth, twenty sixteen. This is like in the web archives, guys. You can go back and see what websites used to look like, which is a kind of a fun tool. Um, so I did have a subscription. It says, "Let's be friends." Aww, Sign sweet. up with your email address to receive news, updates, and free goodies. And I did have a blog at this point at the end of twenty sixteen. Um, what is on this blog <laughs> <laughs> yeah I figured you would like that's right in your alley to have that like you would have definitely thought of that so Makes yeah sense. I guess I yeah I guess I started my blog like earlier than I realized in my business um but yeah so I I was capturing people's emails and at that point it was all going to MailChimp um but MailChimp is something important to remember about that too is For every incentive you create in MailChimp, you have to have a different list. So you get duplicates on multiple lists, which can be really frustrating. Yes. Um, And then just trying to like send emails to both of those lists, you have to like duplicate an email campaign to send it to the other list. And that functionality was like driving me up a wall. I could not handle it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh, But yeah. Moving on, let's talk about kind of like the the type of content that you want to be delivering to your email audience once you've, you know, once you've gotten their emails. Yeah, um, obviously, like the type, I'm, not even myself, but I'm thinking of the type of content that I like to open when I get an email. I want it to be, make it worth the open. You want to serve a ton of value. Like I love getting exclusive discounts, helpful content. Like there's some emails that Every time I get from that person, I'm going to open and read it because I, I love like the stuff that they're telling me about or like, you know, the tips they're telling me or just the way they write even <laughs> like who's or, the copywriter that you love. Oh, there's two. Um, Laura Bell Gray. I love her. And Ash Amberge. Love them. I will read every single email they write because I just love okay. it. <laughs> so I yeah. also really like Ashlyn Carter's emails. I think she's oh, all copywriters. See, I like I like good writing. That's what I like. Of course, yeah. Um, and then I love being like signed up on like any early bird product kind of thing. So that's like something that appeals to me. So think about like what kind of emails you like to open and how can you translate that to your business and shift it to your perspective, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, or like who doesn't love getting, you know, a surprise 50% off sale or whatever. That's always fun too. So Right. Yeah, I have a couple of friends who – they deliver content that I really love. Um, one of them is my friend Rosalyn of Rosalyn Love, and she does a lot of mugs, t-shirts, products based. Mm-hmm. But she has woven in her products with her personal story and what's going on in her life. So it kind of acts as more of a blog post, oh, to be honest. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it's very like newsletter-ish, but I always open those because I like really want to know what's going on and like what's the next cute mug and the cute product that she's launched. I own like quite a few of her mugs. It's a problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <not for her. laughs> but then my other friend, 
Um, Because I know photographers struggle with this. They're like, well, what the heck would I send an email about? But my friend Lindsay, Lindsay LaRue Photography, she does um, like content specifically catered towards couples. So like five ideas for a fun date night. She is kind of also like that blogging format where she's encouraging people to really love each other and date one another. And she always comes up with like the cutest topics. And I read those religiously as well. Like I love getting them and seeing what she has to say. Um, And both those ladies I want to say are are fairly consistent. Um, I think Rosalind has gotten pretty good about sending them like once a week now, um, which obviously doesn't work for everybody. I think Lindsay might send hers once or twice a month. But the point is like, if you pop up in someone's email inbox and you build that trust with them, like they're, you're at the forefront of their mind. And so when they think of a calligrapher or a letter or a stationary designer, when their friend is talking about getting married, and your name comes up, like, you know, they'll be, or their, your name comes up in their mind, they'll be talking to your, their friends about you. Yeah, it's true. It's just a reminder, like, hey, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. I exist. Hey. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's the best way to do it. Like you said, no algorithms, like they're not hiding your stuff. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then for other type of content, we can kind of talk about Biz Birthday Bash a little bit too, because I feel like our email marketing is a little bit more, well, in my mind, like more streamlined than what I'm doing, obviously. So our yeah. strategy for that is to treat them like VIP insiders and also just like keep sharing that awesome content that's super helpful like just like a summary of the the podcast and then of course then we go into like our sales launch weeks that you guys know about obviously um, yes. where we send a billion emails but our strategy there is kind of like the free 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 marry me model so we try to give you guys as much as possible um so that you trust us and you want to buy our stuff. <laughs> Am I spilling secrets? Am I allowed to do that? It's totally fine. Uh, You're totally allowed to do that. I mean, (laughs) there's something so valuable in that type of business model in general of just like providing a lot of content up front before you try to sell to somebody. Um, And so the podcast almost, the podcast acts in a similar way as like our email list, because sometimes we'll take content from the podcast and put it in an email, but the podcast is still touching people touching people on a weekly basis in a very personal way. Yeah, I think the Um, podcast definitely took place of like, are we going to have a super, super robust email strategy? Like, I think our email strategy is still good, but like we could definitely go way more all out with it. But the podcast is a better avenue for us. Like, yeah, it made more. I mean, I have a whole entire plan because I really want to go through (laughs) and like write, (laughs) like write emails for each podcast and like put them in a sequence. And And our Friday emails, the after party that we wanted to do, but. Oh man, guys, so oh, many things so many are going things. on. Oh my god. We're also planning something huge like for this fall. So like our brains are just kind of also, like don't give it away. Oh my god. You know what? You almost said it in I the didn't last episode. Say anything. So don't even <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like right there on tip of my tongue and I was like, uh, oh never mind. Bit, bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There are beans to spill, y'all. Beans to spill. But we but are holding we're back not the beans. It yet, but <laughs> beans um, are contained. Okay. <laughs> So Cammy and I, I would say like in our personal businesses, just approach our lists very differently. Um, I've pretty much like accepted the fact that like my email list is the majority of the people that follow me are fellow creatives. And I'm okay with that because I have like my 14 day free email series called the stationary biz crash course where I like dish out on everything on all the systems I use on the back end. And that's been an awesome incentive. I think I have had a thousand people sign up for that. Holy that's not bananas. Even, I'm that not is, exaggerating. That is amazing. Like that. And that thing is so well thought out. And so like, and you did it in like a two days. You're like, I just did that thing. And I was like, that would have taken me months to do. Like what <laughs> in the world? <laughs> I did it on a plane ride. I think that's when I went out to California. Oh, yeah. So it's like five hours each way and I just like hammered it out you make me so mad sometimes I'm just like what the freak are you kidding me right now sorry about it but I'm also not a painting wizard so it's okay we each have our strengths (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah so Elizabeth freaking kills it at her emails like for sure um but I want to be more consistent in between those like series you know yeah I think a, a huge key of email marketing is consistency and I know I personally suck at this but it's something like consistency truly is the key like whether it's once a month once a week whatever you can actually handle like pick a schedule and stick to it. Like you got to pull an Elizabeth on this one and just batch it all out at once and then have it ready to go. Like 
you know, and I'm, I'm saying I don't, I don't do this either, but that, that, that is the key to like getting people right. actually reading your emails, expecting you in your inbox, like keep it consistent. I think that's my biggest, like t- if you take one thing away from this, that would be it. Right. And if you're at a point in your business where you're like, I can't commit to keeping an email list consistent. I mean, look, like even Cammy and I have a hard time keeping ours consistent. <laughs> but if you're like, wow, this is like way too overwhelming for me, then this is something that you can like set on the back burner for now, you know? Yeah. Like, don't be like, I have to have an email list. And then it like sits there and does nothing. Um, There's no point in like wasting your time if it's not the right fit for you right now. Yeah, it's totally fine. Like I, I have been building my email list and I watch it grow and it's fine, but I'm not doing that much with it. And I know it's something that I'm like, I really want to start tackling and utilizing more. And it's just, you know, there's only one of me. I can only do so much. So at this point, it's, it is on the back burner. And if that's you guys right now, like, it's totally fine. If your business is still doing well, it's not like your business is going to fall apart if you don't send an email once a week, like, you know? Yeah, <laughs> no, just, exactly. Like, it's very true. It's just like another tool to utilize for growth. But like, if you're not ready to use the tool or you just don't have time to use it, like, because you're doing other using other tools, then it's, it's fine. Like, you got to give yourself some grace. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And <clears> like... Don't reinvent the wheel when you're sending emails. Like I, that was my biggest hang up starting out is I was like, oh my gosh, like each email has to be this like special mermaid, you know, that's like <laughs> specific mermaid. only, specific only to email. But then I realized I was like, no, the true strategy is looking at the content I've already created and reiterating that again in an email. So for me personally, like I am currently with my VA, little shout out to Madison because I love her. <laughs> um, are going to be working on creating 52 emails because I want one for each week oh my goodness. so that when somebody joins my email list for an entire year, they would, this is all automatic guys, by the way, this is why I love ConvertKit is that like every single week they would get a different email from me that like points out a different product I've offered or a podcast episode or a blog post. And that content is already working for me. I have YouTube videos. I have so much other content you that you so just much. have to take oh my that gosh. and put it into emails. I know I've been wanting to do this for forever, which is why I like need to have her help me. But then that way I'm like touching base like every week, like, okay, these people are seeing my name in their email inbox every week. And I just need to batch it all at once and like get it done. And then that's like a year of content. And like, Wow. Oh my, oh like, my gosh. You know when you hear a good idea and you just get real excited? I just got that feeling. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, oh. That's so, oh my gosh. No, that's great because I forgot you have YouTube videos, like all these things that people will just like literally forget. Like I forgot and I'm your best friend. So like. Yeah, I like, know. People, it's my poor like YouTube channel is kind of that like forlorn like stepchild but of my so, business that's so great it's so wonderfully done though like I don't know why it's the it's like yeah it's like the stepchild just sitting over there but it's still fabulous like it's a really good looking stepchild you know what I'm saying so. oh well did because uh, I sent you the update right because uh-huh. Madison updated yeah. all my thumbnails for me and they are beautiful yeah you and are I'm like on top of creating content that is pretty dadgum sure like I think about I put so much thought into my Instagram captions and I'm like, why don't I just turn these into a blog post or like something in my email list? Because like some of the tips I've done or just like, I don't know, some of my more well thought out captions. I'm like, these could be reused and they just like, you know, go down into the feed forever. (laughs) No one ever reads them again after their flash in the pan moment, you know? Yep. I know content can always, always be reused. Oh, and that's for sure. something that I'm just trying to be better at. And that's what I want to do with Biz Birthday Bash too, is mm-hmm. like get us some sort of email like um, series set up or sequence where people get an email every week that's like, here's our most recent podcast or something we've talked about in the past, like just to be there just to show up you yeah, know we're gonna need to hire your VA as well <laughs> for, for I know I told her I was like by the way honestly I mean that would be fantastic like it really would <laughs> I know so, something I, I know we should just that have her do it just let but. her do it yeah for sure like <laughs> we just put out the um, content and she just organized it for us <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so don't worry about reinventing the wheel I mean your content can go in like a thousand different ways so you can make a video out of it you can you know a quick short video you can make your little blog post the Instagram Facebook email you know there's so many ways to reuse it <clears throat> exactly um 
I feel like we were going to brainstorm for you a little bit before we wrap up the episode. Okay. Because you were saying you want to be better at email. I do want to be better at email. Okay, let me tell you some of the ideas how I've wanted to use my email list. But like, I'm like, this will never, I'll never do this because I don't have time. Okay. okay so one of the things I want to do is like an exclusive like behind the scenes video of like whatever I painted or was working on, you would get that in email, like a little quick, like minute long video. You know how, you know how Jenna Rainey does like her videos of her painting the stuff but you see the finished yeah. product like having mm-hmm. that as part of my email strategy um so like more behind the scenes painting stuff not necessarily business stuff um and then you know more like supplies guide for watercolor and of course products but here's the thing with my products i'm just having a therapy session with you right now i'm just like so okay. sick of looking at them all the time so i feel like everyone else is too because i you know, I see them all the time. So I'm like, okay, everyone's seen that I have this herb collection. Like, I don't need to send it again. <laughs> like, right. does that make sense? Like, because I'm so close to it, even though I know there's newer people on my list who probably haven't seen it. You know, it's not like they're going and looking at every single thing on my website. So, mm-hmm. and like, it's it would be perfect time for like Mother's Day to be like, I have all these really cute flower cards. That would be a great gift. But I just... I just suck sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I okay. So yes, help me, help me, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to go back, so I think you would be stressing yourself out too much to do those like behind the scenes videos yeah. because I think you're already doing that on Instagram. Yeah, that's that's not like the, where people. Yeah, that's where people need to go if they're going to see you like paint behind the scenes. Um, I see that you're trying to like add value to putting it in. Here's a different the thing: my or email. my Instagram followers and my email list b- totally different, right? So, but so whole it's while, like a whole another uncaptured audience who doesn't see like I feel like I've got Instagram on lock. So I feel like using some of that strategy over to my email list would be helpful because it's like two it's like two different audiences. Like there's really not a ton of overlap. Mm hmm. Is there so what's your reason for wanting your email list to like see you paint, I guess? I don't know, to see the value behind the products kind of thing. You know, that's the kind of thing that dr- really drives my success on Instagram is like seeing the process behind it, understanding, you know, like more of the story of the product than just being like, here's a cute mug kind of thing, like mm-hmm. the making of it. So, yeah. 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 I, well, if you wanted to do that, you could save some of the stories you've done in the past. And just put them into like vertical video format and put it in an email and see how it would go. Yeah. Um, MailChimp is like a little funky with video. It's fine. I'm, um, I'm moving to ConvertKit. You convinced me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but even with like ConvertKit in terms of like embedding videos, um, videos like, yeah, videos in an actual email are tough because normally you have to link somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So normally you're taking someone to like YouTube or Vimeo or like elsewhere to watch the content. You're right. Um, so that's where I'm like, I'm a little stuck on that idea for you. I see like the strategy behind it, but I think it could be just as powerful if you took a photo of yourself painting, put it in an email and we're like, here's what I'm working on this week. Like when you painted those blueberries, oh my gosh, so cute. Like it could just be an update of like, like what I painted this week. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and just more like the, did the desk shot and not like so much like the stylized on a mug kind of shot, you know? Right. Yeah, totally. Like the, like, here's like the raw process <clears throat> of me doing it. And yeah, like what I painted today or what I painted this week could be like really cute yeah. to connect with your audience in the same way. Ooh, and I can even like link like the paint colors I use, <laughs> you yeah, know, like for my Amazon. Exactly. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Your, yes. That oh would be gosh, very I'm smart because then down. you're pushing – like your affiliate links as well. The other idea that I had for you is you have like a bazillion products, I probably guess. 200. I don't know if you um, even know how many. Honestly, probably like 400, 500. I'm not kidding. <laughs> like oh, I'm not gosh. kidding. There's so many. I mean, I can pull up my inventory sheet if we really want to count, but it's all like no. segmented out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, but that's the thing is like you might be sick looking at it, but when you say – you have 500 products. I'm sitting here thinking, what even are they? <laughs> like, because I'm like, yeah, okay, I can think of your Christmas cards, your herb collection, your football and sports collection. And those are kind of like the three things that come to mind. Oh, your enamel pin. And the city collection. There's like 30 cities. Um, so, right. floral so, collection. But I forgot about that one. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, there's all these amazing ones. So, I'm like, you have like 500 products. If you took time to batch emails, you could be sending out 
with one email a week that's like Cammy's top, like Cammy's pick of five. Like or product wow. pick of the week or something like that. I yeah, just, just like product stupid. of the week where you just like feature product. You you think that feels stupid? Um, you cut out. But yeah, I was like, I just I just feel stupid. Like, but I I think about like okay, so email list that I'm inspired from would be like Rifle Paper Co. Like, there's their emails are so simple. It's just like a really cute product shop, and it's just like new pattern is here, and that's it. And it's just like shop now. Like, there's nothing crazy about it, you know. Or like, yeah, and that's what you would do with like either your collections or an individual piece that you'd like to promote where you just say like featured product of the week. I don't know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or like, and then you could include a photo of your creation process for that if you wanted people to see behind the scenes. Yeah, I almost feel like this is like two separate emails. Like I could do maybe like every other week do like a product thing being like, oh, introducing new phone cases because people don't even know I have those, you know, and posting the, about that. And then the next one could be like behind the scenes of this blueberry painting. Here's the paint colors I used. Here's like some of the process shots kind of thing. Yeah. And then, and then, then like maybe here, like shop the mug of the blueberry or, or whatever. I don't have a blueberry mug, but I will. So, you know, something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh yes. Okay. Maybe I, I do think I like that. I like that idea of like, kind of like alternating that like I said I was like hire someone to help you like you don't have the time to do it yourself yeah <laughs> I know that for a fact <laughs> I know I um, also really love to put together a welcome sequence when people sign up to be like meet the artist and be like tell more my story of like my dad was an artist that's why I'm doing this you know I think that's like a really strong story and it's like so important yes. to my brand and I think it'd be really cool to have that like go through a little email sequence kind of deal but <sighs> yes, I agree with that. Okay. Like, I think welcome sequences are super powerful. That's why I always try with our waiting list. Um, whenever we get people to join waiting lists for a product for Biz Birthday Bash, I try to get some sort of welcome sequence in there for like, here's content that we have, like, here's who we are, so that they are familiar with us before we make the sale. Granted, we've had people get annoyed with that before because when you do like four or five emails like in a row in a welcome sequence they're like why are you doing this to me <laughs> they're just this is too many emails like we've occasionally gotten responses like that which that's that's the name of the game I mean I remember Kimmy do you remember I guess this was a couple years ago now when that one girl like accused me of sending spam and was like really nasty about it wait I don't remember this at all <laughs> wait was this with Eliza and calligraphy Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was with Eliza and calligraphy. <laughs> and I think it was like either during Black Friday or sometime. Oh, in the year I do like remember that. It was around Black Friday. Yes, I remember this. Now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she like was really like upset and, and very like cutting in her email to me. And I just kind of kept a level head and I was like, there's an unsubscribe button. Like, I'm not forcing you to stay. <laughs> you can leave if you want. I know. Please leave. I mean, actually. <laughs> everyone knows Black Friday, your inbox is going to be an explosion. Like, you're just going to get a thousand emails from everyone. <laughs> like, that's just how it works. <laughs> yes. Literally, like, things are just like crazy around a certain time of year. And that's what uh, the whole thing goes back to the... Don't be offended when people unsubscribe and like leave your list. I've signed up for friends list before that I have like then unsubscribed from. And that's just because I connect with their content like every day on Instagram or elsewhere and don't need their emails as well. That's kind of like what it comes yeah, down to. Sometimes you like, get I'm still friends with them. <laughs> accidentally unsubscribe. Like I was unsubscribed from Biz Birthday Bash and I'm like, why am I not getting the emails? And somehow, somehow I got unsubscribed. So I had to sign myself back up. So yeah, can, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, so confused. But yeah, Cami, like back to your products is like it's the whole thing too. Whenever you sell anything in business, you have to have like seven touches yeah. right before someone buys. Right. And so for someone to be seeing your products or your process on a weekly basis is a, a really big deal. Yeah, because I'm not um, even showing my I don't even show my products on Instagram half the time. Like right now it's like solely wedding invitations. Um, so I need to like exactly. <laughs> mix that in. Like maybe my email list becomes the product side of things. Yeah. Maybe your email list is specifically products. Cause that's where your product audience lives mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah. And then Instagram is clearly your invitation audience. So there's no problem with having a little bit of like separation of church and state, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, and I kind of started doing exactly the same thing with my Instagram too, where I'm just trying to put more of my 
creative content behind the scenes on Biz Birthday Bash and leave Eliza Ann Calligraphy the invitation. Yeah. So yeah. you can make that decision, of course, like with your content as well. Yeah. I mean, that makes total sense because like you got to serve the different audiences. So now I just need to find, find someone to do it for me. So, hey, holler at me if this is what you do, because I really would like love help. So if you're like an email marketing person and you can help me just put together emails and content, just email me, cami at camimonet.com, please. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get a million emails now. I know, but I'm, <laughs> I'm excited. Like, I really would love to implement this. And I know I truly do not have the time to dedicate it to do it the way I want because – the way I do things, it's like I either do it right or I don't do it at all. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I I think that's like a perfect way to describe it. I 100 percent agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's either all in or it's not happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I mean, I think that's how like a lot of us are in our businesses, which is why it's so easy to get overwhelmed when you have Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, mailing lists, blog posts, YouTube videos. I, I personally have like all of them and it is insane um and I don't know like what I'm doing half the time (laughs) yeah I know it's really you gotta Um, pick like three things and stick with it I guess but yeah I'd love all side note I would love to get my Pinterest strategy like up and going like crazy cool but you know that first I gotta stick with the email list I guess (laughs) one thing at a time yeah but honestly yeah we should start with the email I'm so like inspired by this episode and all these ideas like I, I think I needed this too and I need this like little kick in the pants for myself. So you guys get on my email list because I'm about to get at, get at you with some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, yeah, I think that kind of like wraps up all the thoughts we had. Might have been a little bit tangential, but I feel like we hit some really We are tangential. Good that is us. We are. <laughs> That's just how our episodes go. You guys know that by now. It's like a lot of stories and just conversation. <laughs> um, okay. So if you do want to get on our email list for Biz Birthday Bash, like how I segued this, um, you can wink, wink. Just get <laughs> our free download at bizbirthdaybash.com and you can download the top 100 tips and tricks every small biz owner or every creative biz owner needs to know. Wait, which one is it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, it's every creative business owner creative should know. Every creative business yeah. know. It's awesome. Like, it's an awesome list. There's literally 100 tips and tricks there. Just, like, super actionable strategies. So go download that, and you'll make our day. So, <laughs> Yeah, we'll put the link for that in the show notes as well, because we have a couple things that we're linking for you guys in this episode. Yes. Um, and previous episodes. You can always see the show notes either in the, like, the description of the podcast or you can go to bizbirthdaybash.com where the podcast blog lives because they're there too. Um, there's a lot of different ways to connect with us. And obviously find us on Instagram. We want to be your friend. Yeah. We're over there at Biz Birthday Bash. And if you guys have any um questions for us we do q and cake episodes they are every five weeks so that's just bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash q and cake if you want to submit a question there um and cammy will wrap up with our little itunes ask as well and don't forget (laughs) you got to subscribe hit that subscribe button so that you're notified every time we have a new episode spoiler alert it's every tuesday and then of course leave us a rating and review because we really 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 appreciate um hearing the kind feedback from you guys and it keeps us going so yeah, I think it really, it really does, does actually though. <laughs> <laughs> like on d- bad days, it's like I have to read those. <laughs> true, true. Okay, I think that's it and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Oh, to the Luke kangaroo. Yeah, you you I, did not. I was ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready now. Okay, guys, here's my here's okay. my fun ending. To the Luke kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hey there, fellow stationers. Are you creating custom invitations and still sending a lackluster contract that's hacked together with Google searches and generic templates? We've got you. We've created a custom stationary contract written for stationers by stationers, and it is lawyer reviewed and approved. Hashtag legal rockstar. The custom stationary contract covers every stationary snafu, protects you and your client's interests, and sets up an expectation of professionalism. We've combined our previous contracts as well as years of experience to bring you a contract that covers your booty and your biz. So become a put together pro and breathe a sigh of relief knowing that you have a contract that is easy to understand and avoids confusing legal jargon. The custom stationary contract is only $227, which is half of what you'd expect to pay anywhere else. And it's written by two gals who have seen it all. Spoiler alert, it's us. 
It's time for you to do things right. Go to bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash contract to purchase and download your copy today. 